Hello, cucks. <laughs> MC. We're going to talk today about tag team wrestling, all right? And how tag team wrestling has taken this one trope and they have ran with it for what seems like decades now, right? Tag team wrestling has always been one of the best things about wrestling, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? I grew up watching great tag teams. And I grew up in a time when wrestling video games were starting to get good. And one of the things that I remember prominently is when SmackDown 2, Know Your Role, I think it was called, SmackDown 2 for PS1 came out after SmackDown 1, right? SmackDown 2 was great because they introduced double team moves. That's right, motherfucks. There was a point in time when wrestling games didn't have double team moves. And they introduced some double team moves, which I thought was great, right? Because finally, some of the coolest moves in wrestling are double team moves, right? Like the 3D, you know? You could finally do the 3D. There was finally a reason to play as the Dudley Boys in a tag team match. Because in the first game, there was no point in playing as the Dudleys in a tag team match because there's no double team moves. Why would you play as the Dudleys? So you can hit like like the the curtain call with Diva, whatever the fuck he calls it, or the or the power bomb with Bubba Ray, which was his finisher in the first game. No, it makes no sense, right? Tag team wrestling is all about tag finishes and tag team moves, right? And tag team synergy. And a big part of the synergy comes from the concept, the logic, and the gimmick behind a tag team, right? So let's take a look at some great tag teams of yesteryear. You know what I'm saying? First of all, we have Edge and Christian, right? Edge and Christian start out as like the brood, right? They start out as two vampires, basically. Let's call it like it is. Two mysterious dudes. One of them is Edge, who's like this mysterious, like crazy guy, maybe a vampire, maybe not. And Christian, who was supposed to be a vampire, right? Along with Gangrel, you know? So the entire premise of this is that it's these two guys who think they're vampires. All right, that's kind of cool. They have the look, it worked. Then they evolved into like the edge of creation that we all know and love. The two goofy guys with an incredibly amazing sense of humor, great charisma, and incredible promos, both in terms of like content and delivery, right? Like, I remember some of the Edge and Christian promos as being fantastic. Like, Edge being like, even though Jersey is a state with skanky hoes, and then he just, like, pauses everyone and boos, right? So, like, the, the delivery, all that was amazing, right? But more importantly, they became a team of two brothers, right? Two brothers who were trying to pursue their dreams, right? But then got arrogant and started, be, you know, developing their character a little bit. Then we have the Hardy Boys. Another two brothers trying to pursue their dream, but vastly different. Because their entire thing is they're extreme. They like taking risks. They which kind of fits with their character because the Hardy Boys are presented as two smaller guys, right? Back then, they were small guys. So it's like, okay, like, you can't really believe that Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy's, you know, are going to be able to beat up, like, Godfather and Test, let's say, right? Or Test and Albert, right? Which was a real tag team. So it's like, how are they going to do it? Well, they can do it by virtue of taking risks, right? By doing crazy shit that's high risk, high reward. That's the only way that it's feasible for the two of them to beat up like Test and Albert, which is which would never happen in real life, right? Which brings me to a, to a point. I was watching a match in AEW. I think it was like, it involved Hangman Page and Matt Hardy. And someone was like, oh, like, underrated strength and size. And I'm like, who the fuck is he talking about? Is he talking about like, Matt Hardy or Hangman Page? Because both these guys are, are really cruiserweights. Matt Hardy is a former cruiserweight champion. You know what I mean? And, and here's the thing about that, right? It's like Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy, Back in WWE, when they started, they were small dudes because people were just big back then. People like Godfather, Val Venus, right? Um, Albert, Test, obviously Triple H and Friends. You know what I'm saying? All these guys were giant dudes. There was a lot of big motherfucks back then. The Dudley Boys were big dudes, right? And Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, who are not small men by any metric, were considered tiny guys. Like, they were considered the same way that, like, Grand Metalik... And, and Lisa Dorado are considered now. You know what I mean? Like, Jeff Hardy, would get, Jeff Hardy's like 6'1", 6'2". He's like a tall guy in real life. You'd be like, oh, it's a tall guy, right? He gets thrown around, right, by like Albert, you know? Like he's nothing. He gets f 5 by Brock Lesnar. Like he's nothing, right? And now, Jeff Hardy is like one of the bigger guys. Like Jeff Hardy is now like a believable heavyweight. Like the difference between Jeff Hardy and Sheamus isn't that great, you know? Sheamus is bigger, but not by much, right? Like Godfather towers over both of them, you know? And as a result of that, now you have just smaller dudes, like Lince Dorado, right? Who is also part of a tag team, and kind of a big problem with this whole tag team situation. So now that we've gone over some good tag teams of the past, right? And the Dudley Boys, everybody knows about them, you know? Let's, and there's many, many more, by the way, like Acolytes, etc., right? But the tag teams of the past made sense, right? It made sense. 
the Acolytes, who became the uh, Acolyte Protection Agency, were two guys who, in real life, were best friends, but who became a tag team while they were under The Undertaker, right? They were working for Undertaker, and then they just shed the gimmick, naturally, and just became the two badasses that they are, right? But the tag team fit. Ron Simmons, or Farouk as he was called, and JBL, Bradshaw, right? These guys look and fit the part. The fact that they're best friends in real life is not really important, but it adds to the allure, right? It's like, this is what you expect Bradshaw and Farouk to do when they're hanging out by themselves or with their other friends, right? They're out there drinking, playing cards, and smoking cigars because that's the kind of dudes they are, right? They're two big, strong, real men who are here to just destroy everybody. So it made sense. It fit. It felt like a tag team. Their moves were appropriate. Farouk did the, the Dominator and the one-handed spine buster, and JBL did the very underrated close line from hell. The, everything about their tag team, from the way they walk through the ring to the way they walk out of the ring, their gimmick, their mannerisms, the things they do and say, fit them perfectly. I remember when the Acolytes were feuding with uh, DX, right, with uh, New Age Outlaws, I should say, and I remember when, like, the whole point was, like, the New Age Outlaws are kind of, like, silly, right, even though their heels are silly, and Farouk and, and Bradshaw are not. They're not, they're not fucking around, you know? So they, they, like, destroy them in one episode of Raw, and Farouk does, like, a, like a, like a cross chop, right? But it comes off as, like, goofy and, like, awkward, right? Because Farouk is not that kind of guy. He's not this, like, physical performer. He's not like a Shawn Michaels, like a charismatic, like, oh, look at me, I'm going to dance around. No, he's an ass kicker. So when he does it, it looks awkward because he doesn't know how to dance. He doesn't know how to do taunts. He knows how to kick ass, right? It fit perfectly. It told the story. Even Farouk doing a cross shot told the story. And then he was like, I got two words for you, DX, right? Or Bradshaw was like, I got two words for you, DX. And gives the mic to Farouk. And Farouk's like, ass kicking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, these guys are not to be fucked with. And the reputation precedes them, you know? Same thing with the Dudley boys. There's a gimmick there, right? There's a gimmick. They're half-brothers, right? Big Daddy Dudley went around fucking broads everywhere, and two of his sons are now in WWE. They're half-brothers, and they also have the sub-gimmick of being quasi-retarded, right? Especially Bubba Ray. He's like this retarded guy who gets off on, on sexually on putting women through tables, you know? And Devon is kind of the guy that keeps him in check, you know? Remember when Bubba Ray would power about women through tables? And he would have this like orgasmic look on his face, and Diva would have to slap him in the face to like shake him out of it, right? Think about that. Think about the amount of character work that is involved in something as simple as that compared to now. Like, what tag team does, does any of that? Now it's like you have like like I don't know, FTR, and they're like, oh, we're great. Like their entire gimmick is just saying they're great. They don't do anything else. They just put on wrestling matches and say they're great, right? They don't have any nuance. There's no gimmick there, right? There's nothing like like. If you take FTR and the Good Brothers and switch them around, right? What difference will there be? They're the same tag team. It's just two guys who are like, we're better than you think. We're the best in the world. That's it. That's their entire gimmick. That's the entire gimmick of every tag team that's not good enough for WWE. And the gimmick for a lot of tag teams that are in WWE right now. You know, FTR and the Good Brothers are the same shit. You don't need both of them. It's like Ryan Gosling and Ryan Reynolds. You don't need both of those motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I got to say about that, right? Comparing yet the tag teams of yesteryear to tag teams of today, you see this trend, right? The tag teams of today are lazy, thrown together, and make no sense. There are very few tag teams that make a little bit of sense, right? Like, you can argue the Usos make some sense, right? Because they're twins, and they kind of have like a sub-gimmick. So you need a gimmick and a sub-gimmick, right? Like, when I say sub-gimmick, I mean like an actual wrestling gimmick. And when I say gimmick, it's more of the broader sense of like, what is this tag team, right? So what are the Usos? They're two twin brothers who are wrestlers, right? What is their sub-gimmick? For a while, it was like Uso Penitentiary. Like, they just, they were just these two ghetto guys, basically. It was like the whole thing, right? You know, prior to that, it was, they were these two twins who were proud Samoans. You know, they got the Samoan gimmick. All that horse shit when they come out uh, you know, to the ring, right? And now their gimmick is like, they're Roman Reigns' subordinates. You know, like, there's, like, his, like, inferior family members, you know? Whatever, who cares? But at least they have something going for them. New Day as well. Like, you can look at New Day and be like, all right, there's, like, I, I see what's going on here. There's something there, right? Hurt Business is another example, right? Like, Shelton Benjamin, when he was with Charlie Haas, is a different Shelton Benjamin than the one now, right? Like, it's subtly different because his gimmick is that of the Hurt Business, but it's different, right? It doesn't feel like the same guy. Like, he's not this smiling college athlete anymore. Now he's a grown man who wears a suit and is there to kick ass. It's a different thing, right? So there are some 
good tag teams out there, right? But the actual tag teams themselves, like if you look at Cedric Alexander and Shelf Benjamin, this is the definition of a thrown together tag team. You know, they're just like, all right, we're gonna put these two guys here with MVP. Like Hurt Business is basically MVP, right? He's basically MVP, and he takes in Lashley, right? It's like it's they have like the beatdown clan in TNA, but more so than that, it's just MVP's gimmick, just extrapolated to other wrestlers, right? It's just MVP's gimmick given to other wrestlers just by being associated to MVP. Kind of like the Dark Ministry, right? Where you take The Undertaker, it's like his gimmick, and they're like, all right, Viscera is now like an evil guy. Midian is now an evil guy. Farouk and Bradshaw are now evil guys, you know? It's the same shit, it's the same gimmick, but you pass it on to the people, right? So, though the gimmick works well, the tag team of MVP and Cedric Alexander is a thrown together tag team. It makes no sense. Like, why would these guys team uh, together? You know what I mean? It doesn't. It, it's so different than when he was teaming up with Chad Gable. It's like, oh, okay, you're trying to do like Charlie Austin, Shelton Benjamin again. So put them together. Great. Yeah. Fucking weird if you ask me. But it is what it is. So now let's look at the biggest problem, in my opinion, about tag team wrestling today. I just alluded to it a little bit. It's the throwing together of tag teams that make no sense. But more important than that, it's for some reason. This desire to take two singles guys, make them into a tag team, and kind of pretend that this tag team is good. You know, I don't understand this trend at all. Like, think about that for a second. How many tag team champions have there been that have just been two guys thrown together? A lot, right? Now, let's take away from those, like, tag team champions like Triple H and Stone Cold, right? Because, okay, they were thrown together, but it was part of a greater point. It was the two top guys, basically, the two top heels thrown together. And then becoming tag team champions is understandable because Stone Cold and Triple H should be able to beat up Steve Blackman and Al Snow, right? Like, that shouldn't be a problem, you know? But then as we start going down the list, we see even dumber shit, right? Like David Otonga and John Cena. Okay, fine. You have John Cena, who's like the number one guy, and you have David Otonga, who you thought was going to be a big deal. Turned out he was a huge flop, but you thought he had something, and you thought he was going to be a big deal. So now, what do you have, right? You have the standard being lowered. And now the standard has gone all the way to things like Tyson Kidd and Cesaro, which made an interesting and, you know, fun tag team. Don't get me wrong. Like, they're a fun tag team, Cesaro and, uh, what's his face? And Tyson Kidd, right? But it's just a thrown-together tag team that worked out, right? It's just like Nakamura and Cesaro, another thrown-together tag team that is kind of working out. This is not how tag team wrestling should go, right? Cesaro and Nakamura should not be able to beat, uh, Fuck okay, I was going to say crime time, but whatever the fuck they're called, Street Profits, right? Like, they're not, they should be able to beat them. Like, Street Profits are an actual tag team. Like, they're presented as a tag team. It's not these two singles guys that join up. They are a tag team. So, the tag team should always beat the combination of two random mid-carders, right? Once in a while, this is okay, don't get me wrong. Because, for example, Beer Money, right? One of the best tag teams of all time, Beer Money started like this too. It was two guys that had nothing to do. They were thrown together, but they made it work. They became a tag team. They developed a, a, a tag team finisher. They developed other tag team moves. They had great chemistry. Um, they had their own theme song. They had their own team name. They became a real tag team, right? And when I say team name, I don't mean like a horseshit, like hashtag type name, like the Hardy bros, you know, Matt Hardy and, I mean, sorry, Jeff Hardy and Matt Riddle. You know what I mean? Just like, the only way that, that works is if it's like a parody of the Hardy Boys, right? So, so they can be like, Matt and Jeff, the Hardy Bros, you know? How they used to say, like, Matt and Jeff, the Hardy Boys. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny, I think. But nonetheless, the point I'm trying to make is that tag teams that are thrown together are not good. And it is lazy writing, right? And it's also a lack of investment. You're not investing in people, you know? You have tag teams that are there that feel like tag teams. Like Wesley Blake and that Steve Kuttler guy, for example. They feel like a tag team. They've been teaming together forever, right? They had a gimmick right, of two military guys when they were with Jackson Riker, but they had a giving, right? There was something there that made sense. It's like, that's what I like to see. I don't want to see like, like, imagine if, 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 I don't know, one, like, on SmackDown, you have Nakamura and Cesaro becoming SmackDown Tag Team Champions, and then on Raw, you have the Hardy Bros becoming uh, Tag Team Champions, and then it's time for Clash of Champions or whatever the fuck Survivor Series, right? And they fight each other, right? Who would want to watch that? That just feels like a fatal four-way match where people are tagging for no reason, you know? I don't care who the better tag team is, right? The whole point of tag team wrestling is to have... The, the team has to be greater than the two individuals uh, independently of each other, right? So that's why it makes no sense to have, some, for example, 
I don't know, the Dudley boys, you split them apart, and then you have Bubba Ray go team with Tommy Dreamer, and Devon goes in teams with Ron Simmons, right? To create two new tag teams. No, they shouldn't, these tag teams shouldn't be good. And there, there should be no motivation for these two guys to tag team with other people. The motivation should be they, they create a, they stay with their own tag team, the Dudley boys, right? Which is a tried and true format, which works and which wins matches, right? That's what I'm trying to get at here. This, like, emphasis on having two singles guys make a tag team and become a successful tag team just like that undermines the general premise of being a tag team wrestler, right? It's the same thing with, like, people that switch between divisions and other contexts, right? So, for example, if, if you had, like, a legitimate hardcore division, right? Like, back in the day, the hardcore division was presented as, like, its own division in the sense that, like, all right, if you had, like, Sting versus Big Vito in WCW, Sting would obviously beat Big Vito, right? But Big Vito would have a huge advantage over Sting, over, over Sting in a hardcore match. Now, Sting might still beat him, but it would be closer because Vito was a hardcore wrestler, right? That's why when you have something like Mick Foley versus Triple H, and Mick Foley's like, I'm bringing back Cactus Jack, we're gonna do a street fight. That's awesome, or whatever, hell in a cell, right? That, the whole premise there is this. I'm not fucking around anymore, and now we're doing things in my match. You're a better athlete than me. You're a better wrestler than me. But can you handle me throwing you off a cage? Because I can take it, right? It plays up to the strengths of that character. So that's the kind of logic that should apply to tag team wrestling as well, right? If two singles guys who have never tagged before are in a tag match with a, with a tag team that has 10 years experience, the tag team with 10 years experience should, should squash them. It should squash them completely, right? The same way that if you, let's say you take like, I don't know, um, like a wrestler who's like 210 pounds, right? And he's like, I'm going to lose five pounds to go to 205 Live. He should be a jobber at 205 Live because he is now wrestling a different style, right? Against different people who are experienced in that division. This is how you create prestige around divisions, right? The, like, the tag team division should, like, the, there, sh there should be an ongoing storyline subliminally where the tag team wrestlers have this superiority complex when it comes to tag team wrestling, right? And that they, they should some, somehow and once in a while challenge singles wrestlers to tag team exhibition matches, right? You know, again, think about that. You would have things like the Big Show who could easily beat two random guys in a handicap match, right? Back in the day. If you had the Big Show versus Shannon Moore and, I don't know, Steve Blackman, right? Like tagging together. Big Show would beat them both. But Big Show versus the Dudley Boys, the Dudley Boys beat the Big Show because they're a tag team, right? Big Show cannot, cannot defeat them one by one because they're a tag team. They, they're a package deal, motherfucks. This element, this subtle element of tag team wrestling is long and gone for some reason. I do not understand it. This is what tag team wrestling is to me. The whole point is that you have these two guys who are better together than they are on their own. And that's why they're teaming, right? Because they realize that in their case, 1 plus 1 equals 3. And everyone in the singles division is a 1.5. So they are inferior in some ways to people in the singles division. But together, they are superior than any two people combined, right? Unless they we're talking about other tag teams. This has been lost. That's why we have things like Kenny Omega and Adam Page are now a tag team. And they're the best tag team in the world. All of a sudden, they, they win like five, six matches. And, and Tony Schiavone is like, are they the best tag team in the world or is it the Young Bucks? The answer is it's neither of them. They're shit. But the Young Bucks, at least, are a tag team. They feel like a tag team. They wrestle like a tag team. They do things like a tag team. They have the same entrance. They have the same mannerisms. They're brothers. They have, so they have like a gimmick of sorts. They feel like a tag team. Private Party feels like a tag team. The Acclaimed feels like a tag team. SCU, not so much. Frankie Kazarian and uh, Daniels feel like a tag team just because they've been around you know, forever and they've been TV together forever. But that's about it. The other one, like Scorpio Sky, I don't give a shit about him. You know, Dark Order feels like a tag team. You know, they just feel like a tag team. Like they have a gimmick and everything, right? But then you have so many of these like people like Jericho and Swagger doesn't feel like a tag team. You know, they're part of the same stable, but they're just a makeshift tag team. It's just like, oh, let's take like, the guy who's like really good and a guy who's really strong and make him a tag team and have him be successful. Right? It's not interesting, right? FTR, like it or, or, or hate it, feel like a tag team. That's why they get the title shots, motherfuckers. So that's what I gotta say about that. In order to fix wrestling, one of the most important things that needs to be fixed is the tag team scene. It should be a very, very, very rare occurrence for two random people to even challenge for the tag team championship, right? 
and in an even rarer occurrence for them to win it. You can have it happen once in a while, right? When you when you stumble upon a beer money, or when you have like Stone Cold or Triple H or that caliber of stars, like tag teaming, you know? Then you can have or like Kane and Big Show, right? Remember Kane and Big Show? That was like a throw together tag team, but it worked because it's it's fucking Kane and Big Show. You know what I mean? It's two guys who are just giants. Their whole thing is like, yo, you can't beat us. We're much bigger and stronger than you, you know? So there you have it. That's what I gotta say about that. You know? Uh, tag team wrestling needs to come back, and this kind of horseshit needs to stop. You know what I mean? Motherfucks.